Arsenal defeating Chelsea by three goals to one. Shaka Hislop, Frank LeBeouf and Craig Burley with us. Craig, where did this come from? Uh, Lampard mentioned complacency, and I said uh, two or three days ago, Dan, that, that in some sense the pressure was uh, a lot on Chelsea because here they were going into the backyard of a team who have been appalling in a, Lon in a big London derby. Uh, and, and really everybody, every man and his dog expected Chelsea to win. And here we had a side who, who really didn't turn up. Uh, and now that's now uh, three losses in the last four. And that one win against West Ham recently was, as we discussed, very, very flattering on Chelsea. So there are, you know, all the li all the little nuances of the team that we thought he had found the balance and were working are now not working. You know, the, the fullbacks were not fit coming into the game. Or certainly, James had missed the last game. Chilwell had been off early with a knock in the last game. And, and they didn't look fit. Werner's form, we discussed that mm. uh, at length in the week. And he was absolutely awful again. I mean, Pulisic was barely better on the, on the other side. But I mean, barely. But, but Timo Werner was awful. And on top of that, the way he was jogging around, he was like half-hearted. So, you know, Lampard spoke about it after the game. He said players were jogging about. Well, take them off. Take them off. 20 minutes, Timo Werner, doesn't matter who it is, take them off. If they're not responding to what you want and you can't keep saying... Well, we didn't start properly. Well, we thought we could just turn up and win. And I'll be dropping players in the next game against Aston Villa in 40 hours, who, by the way, are flying. Mm. Well, he can drop players all he wants, but he has to take responsibility too. He selected the fullbacks who didn't look fit. He selected Werner again, who's been really, really poor. And it just didn't happen for them. Well, let's pick up on those quotes. This is uh, just part of what Frank Lampard said. Visibly very angry after this result. Uh, you get what you deserve. Lazy to give away a penalty. Lazy in terms of giving away a free kick that Shaka puts in the top corner. I'm very, very disappointed in the way we approach the first half because some things in football are basic. It's not tactics or systems. It's do you want to run? Do you want to back up your teammate? Do you want to sprint or do you want to jog? Or maybe you want to say, oh, maybe I don't have to run. We took that decision rather than the right one. Uh, Frank, this is damning from Frank Lampard about his team afterwards. Is it necessary? Well, Would right it help? I don't know, but sometimes you, you cannot say anything but that. You know, what you just said. You know, I, it's what I felt. I mean, you can, be, you can have a bad day. I mean, they're human beings and uh, you can be bad. But with trying something at least, I mean, that was a, a dismal, appalling performance and inexcusable performance from the, from the Chelsea player. I mean, again, you have to show pride. You play for a club, for fans, for a color. You have to make sure that you give 100%. Even if you have a bad game, even if you make mistakes, it's part of the game. And we'll forgive you as long as you give everything. But as Craig said... I don't know if one of the players gave something. Yes, Hudson Odoi, when he came in the second half, he was good and changed a little bit the, the rhythm of the, of the Chelsea team. But otherwise, appalling, again, appalling performance from the Blues and big shame on them. After the game, Lampard said, Shaka, look, I'm going to take responsibility for this, but I can only tell the players so much. They have to go on the pitch and they have to deliver which is fine, but is there a sense that maybe the players aren't even listening to him? Uh, listen, I, I found a lot about what Frank Lampard said after the game to, to, be, to be confusing. From a, a man who knows English football as well as he does, um, I, to, to come out with, with some of the things, well, both before the game, which I'll touch on, and then after, to come out and say the players simply weren't good enough, but I have to take responsibility for that publicly. I mean, you've just said it publicly, that they're not, they, they weren't good enough on the day. Um, at the same time, I, you, you wouldn't have thought that Arsenal and Arteta are the ones coming into this game under pressure. I think Frank Lampard kind of gave his team an excuse in, in talking about before the game wanting to move their fixture against Aston Villa back 24 hours. And as we said time and time again on here, you give players an excuse, nine out of ten times, they're going to take it. And that's exactly what Chelsea did. And the surprising thing for me is, again, this is Frank Lampard, who knows English football, who's been here, seen it, done it as a player, learning it as a manager. You know you can't... You, you, if you ask to have games moved, it's going to fall on deaf ears. Don't give anybody that excuse. And then, as, as Craig Riley pointed out, 
you have to make changes. If things aren't going well, you have to make the big calls. Arteta uh, did that in, in leaving Obama Yang on the sidelines for as long as he did. And Arsenal responded. They, they had some luck. Make no mistake about it. But Arsenal were by far the better of the two. And I put that down to, to Frank Lampard. Uh, and Dan, sorry, but for the substitution, what I will be very critical uh, towards uh, Frank is I don't understand if in the second half you have Chilwell and Rhys James and Hudson Odoi, you know, giving crosses. Uh, why do you keep Giroud on the bench where mm. you can play at two at front and put danger? Because as uh, Shaka said, you know, the English football showed that uh, every time it comes from the flanks, when you have trouble, you know, put, you put on the side and you give crosses to big men. I mean, I played against Everton, I played against Sunderland, I played against the players, you know, we're so, t so tall that you can't cope with them. And they could have done that, you know, with, uh, with uh, Abraham and Giroud, it wouldn't have been a threat. No, what he did, he put Averts on, didn't make any change. And that I didn't understand. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.